Hey guys, so today we are doing an experiment on qualitative analysis of the silver group cations. So qualitative analysis is when you answer the question what is in something and quantitative is like how much of it is there. So today we are just interested in knowing what is in a solution. So we are given an unknown solution here and then we are supposed to find out what cations are in there. And when we talk about silver group cations, they are called the silver group because they have one thing in common. So they are all insoluble salts of, um, all their chlorides are insoluble, and therefore we expect that if we have any chloride in the solution, then it should precipitate all of these um, cations. So we have like lead, and silver and mercury in the silver group cations and we are going to see if our unknown number four here has either lead or silver or mercury or all of them and the interesting thing is that all of them have like a distinctive way of confirming their presence so with lead for example we expect if it's in the solution whenever we add the potassium chromate um, it should give us a yellow precipitate and for mercury if we add ammonia to it it should give us a black precipitate and for silver if it has uh, if it's in the solution then we should have a white precipitate when we add the nitric acid to it so we will get started by taking six drops of our unknown and putting it into the test tube All right, so once I have this, I'm going to add about five drops of cold water. And this is the ionized water. Well, as I say, because silver group cations have insoluble chlorides, I am going to add um, six molar HCl. HCl will be our source of chloride. And I'm going to add two drops. And mix it. So right away you can see that we have a white precipitate. So that should tell us that there should be some either lead or silver or mercury or all of them in this precipitate. And I am going to mix this and centrifuge it. So I am using a starting rod to mix and make sure that I have a uniform mixture. And then I'll centrifuge. So this is my centrifuge right here. I just put in and I balance it and let's see. So the centrifuging should um, help us separate the precipitate from the supernatant. So at this point, I have all my precipitate at the bottom and I am going to add one more drop of HCl just to make sure that none of the silver group cations are still in my supernatant. And as you can see, it's clear and with this I am going to carefully take out the supernatant and leave my precipitate in the test tube. Alright, there we go. 
go. So in this precipitate, I expect to have the silver group cations. This one might have other groups, but they are soluble chloride. So we do not need to be too careful about this. We can discard the supernated, but we have to keep our precipitate to confirm if it has the other groups. All right. And so with my precipitate, I am going to wash it with um, with cold water. Soluble, but really at a higher temperature we can get some of it to dissolve so it has like an intermediate solubility the lead chloride salts and so I'm going to have hot water which should dissolve out the lead salt um, so let's see I will add 15 drops of hot water Once it's done centrifuging, I'm going to take out my supernatant and put it in a new test tube. So this time round, I'm not going to discard the, the supernatant just because I know that if there was any lead um, cations in here, it should be dissolved because um, lead, lead chloride salt are soluble in hot water. So again, I'll just add... Um, 20, 15 drops of hot water and do the same thing. And I will mix it and make sure that I can get out as much lead chloride as I can just in case it's in there. And again, I'll centrifuge. All 
patent, so I'll, I'll add the, um, the additional hot water that I just added here. Okay, so now I have a precipitate and my supernatant, which is a clear solution. So I am going to take the supernatant and add two drops of potassium chromate. And this is a confirmatory um, step for lead chloride. So if we have lead cations, it should give us a yellow precipitate. So let's see what happens. Well, well, as you can see here, our precipitate turned yellow. All right, now let's keep going. Since we separated out the lead, we might still have mercury and silver, or either one, or both. And so I am going to add, um, well, before I add anything to this, I'm just going to wash my precipitate with hot water again, just to make sure that I can take out all the um, lead cations out. Just rinse it and carefully draw out the liquid. So now I am going to take um, my precipitate here and add four drops of ammonia. So with ammonia, I'm going to confirm if we have any mercury cations in here. If there's mercury, then my white precipitate is going to turn black. If it doesn't, then we know that there's no mercury and we can go to the next step. So let's take four drops of ammonia. Wow, so we can see a nice black precipitate at the bottom of this contain, um, test tube. And that should tell me that mercury is definitely present in this solution. So I'll just centrifuge this again to separate my supernatant and the rest of the precipitate. So again, it's important to not every step of the way. So in step one, I had a white precipitate after adding HCl and then the second step was when I um, took my supernatant after adding hot water to it I had a yellow yellow precipitate after adding the potassium chromate. And after I separated this mixture, you saw that when I added ammonia, I had a black precipitate. Alright, so far we have separated out lead in step 2 and now mercury in step 3. Okay, I have to centrifuge this one more time.
All right, so right now I can put aside my precipitate from step three, but I need my supernatant in step four to confirm if there's any silver ions remaining in this solution. So if it turns white, if, it, if I have another white precipitate, then that's a confirmatory test for the silver cation. If it doesn't, then there's no silver. So I'm going to put 16 drops of nitric acid. I'll do this in the hood just because this fuming and gas is here. my solution is, uh, has a white suspension to it. So we have a white precipitate. And I am going to knock this observation down in my notebook. That after adding nitric acid, I have a white precipitate. So we reached the end of our experiment and we confirmed that our unknown number four, um, if you just go back and look at the confirmatory steps for each, we had a positive result and that should tell you what this unknown number four has. So you can use this data to um, analyze your results and say what, what you found out in, um, in this unknown number four solution. All right.